I sincerely hope that none of you ever come across this problem, but there may be a time where you turn on your computer and you get one of the following messages, either inaccessible boot device or checking media presence. If that happens, it's important that you know that these errors can be caused by both software and hardware. So in today's video, I'm going to tell you how to troubleshoot this problem if you come across it and what to do at each step of the way in the process. And before we get too far into it, you need to understand that some of you are not going to like what I have to tell you today. And if you've watched any of my videos before, you know I'm big on backing up your data. And unfortunately, some of you are going to find out the hard way today why that's so important. Okay, so as I said before, this problem can only be software or hardware. So what's happening when you get one of these error messages is that your system BIOS is not communicating with the hard drive in order to successfully boot Windows. And if your BIOS and your hard drive are not on the same page, or in some cases, the hard drive is working, but it can't load Windows because there may be some kind of corruption. So what you always want to do first is eliminate the hardware and you can do that by going into your BIOS to see if your drive is even listed. You can get into your BIOS usually by pressing F1 or delete or some function key for your specific manufacturer. Once you get into your BIOS, you need to go look for these physical storage devices like your hard drive inside your BIOS. If your BIOS is not showing any kind of drive whatsoever, if it doesn't show it at all, Chances are your drive is bad and it's time to replace it. I would definitely either consider hooking that drive up in a secondary machine and see if you can access it that way. If you can't and you have really important data on it, you might want to consider consulting a professional and have them try to extract the data off that drive. But if your BIOS isn't seeing the hard drive, it can only be one of several things. Either your motherboard's bad, which is pretty rare, your hard drive has gone bad, which is pretty common, or you might even just have a plug disconnected. So before you go running off spending money on having somebody try to pull data off your drive, open up your computer and let's make sure the cables are connected. Now, if you've done all that already, you've gone through the BIOS, it doesn't recognize your drive, you've tested it to make sure it's connected, chances are your hard drive is bad. The best thing you can do at this point is just put a new drive in and start over. But if your drive is connected and recognized in the BIOS, then it might just be a software problem. And a lot of times you'll see a spinning disk when Windows is trying to load and maybe it never does. That at least tells you that the hard drive is physically seen by the BIOS and Windows is trying to load. Now it could still be a hardware problem at this point, but there are some things we can do to test the drive and see why Windows isn't loading. So the next steps in the process are gonna to be to figure out what's causing the problem, why Windows isn't booting, or why Windows is not recognizing your drive. In this particular case, my client's machine just sat there with the spinning circle, it never loaded the desktop, and then just would eventually restart and start the whole process over. So I knew it was trying to get into Windows, but something was preventing it. Now, that could still be a hardware problem, it could be a bad sector on the disk or something like that, or it could just be a corrupted Windows. Now in this case, and this is something I recommend everybody does, if you have a second machine that you can hook up an external drive reader, pull that drive out, put it in the drive reader, and that way you might at least still have a chance to get your data. In this case, that's exactly what I did. I didn't care about Windows, I didn't care about the PC, all I needed was the client data, and from that point on, everything would be fine. So I put the drive in the external drive reader, and thankfully was able to get his files off the drive. So one, that tells me that the drive is still somewhat functional. It could still be bad, but at least I was able to do that. Secondly, I know that the mechanics of the hard drive are probably okay. And third, most importantly, the data was safe. But if you've already got your stuff backed up, you can skip that part. But I wanted to get the files off the hard drive before I continued any further doing any kind of troubleshooting. So while I had this client's hard drive connected to the drive reader and connected to my machine, I went ahead and went to a command prompt changed to the drive letter that his drive was in, then ran a check disk with the R switch. That's C-H-K-D-S-K -S -S space forward slash R. What this basically does is it makes sure that the file structure on the hard drive is not damaged or corrupted, but the slash R also tests the physical integrity of the drive. Because as I said before, even though I was able to pull some files off of it, it doesn't mean that it doesn't have bad sectors or some other indicator of possible failure. So while I have the drive, I've got the files backed up, I'm running check disk to make sure that the drive is okay. Now at this point, the check disk did find some errors in the file system, but it did not find any physical drive errors. So at this point, I know that drive is good. Now I just know it's probably something to do with the way files are written to the drive or something in Windows. But the good news is, is I don't have to replace the drive. I can put it back in the system and then start troubleshooting Windows. And even though the check disk said everything's okay, there's one more thing I wanna try, which is what's called System File Checker. 
From that same command prompt, you type SFC space forward slash scan now. And what that does is it makes sure that all the Windows system files are the correct size, correct versions for that operating system. It doesn't always fix a lot, but it's always worth doing if you have access to that drive. So we were able to see the contents of the drive. We were able to run check disk and it did find issues that it said it repaired. Now what we're gonna do is put it back in the computer and see if the computer boots. So unfortunately, after putting the drive back in, Windows is doing the same thing, just the same spinning disk over and over again. So now what we're gonna have to do is get into the advanced troubleshooting mode. The way you do that is just simply turn on your computer and when your manufacturer screen comes up or you start to see Windows load, power the machine off. Do that three, four, five, six times, however long it takes, and eventually you'll get a message on your screen where it allows you to go into advanced troubleshooting. Now inside advanced troubleshooting, there are a bunch of options that we can use to try and repair windows. What you wanna do is just go ahead and click on your advanced options. And then once you're inside advanced options, click on troubleshoot. So I would start with system restore first to see if there are any known restore points that you can restore from and possibly bring your computer back to life. Now, if you get prompted for a password here, it's usually because you have a Microsoft account. So what you need to do is type in the login password that you normally use when you log into the computer and system restore will run. Now, if you do not have system restore enabled at this point, there is another video that you need to watch after this about why you should always enable system restore. And this is a perfect example of why. In this situation, because System Restore was never enabled, there were no restore points to possibly put the machine back in working order. So that's important, but for the purpose of this video, we're just gonna go on to the next thing. I'm gonna go back to the main options, go to Troubleshoot, Advanced Options, and I'm gonna to try to uninstall updates. Now, I normally start with the feature updates. Those are the big mega updates, and those are usually the ones that cause the most problems. Go ahead and try that and see if it works. In this case, it didn't, so I'm gonna just go ahead and close that. I'm gonna go back to Troubleshoot. I'm gonna go back to Advanced Options. I'm gonna go back to Uninstall Updates, and now I'm just gonna try the latest quality updates, which are usually drivers and security updates. If any of these steps work for you, obviously restart the computer and see if everything works. If it doesn't, then just go back to the same thing by getting into the advanced troubleshooting by powering off your computer multiple times. Hopefully, eventually, one of these will fix the problem. But if not, there is a few last resorts we can try. We're gonna see if the quality update uninstalls, and if so, we'll restart. If not, we'll go to the next step. Okay, in this case, it did uninstall the last quality update. So I'm gonna go ahead and click close or done, and I'm gonna see if Windows will now load. If it does, great, your problem's fixed. If it doesn't, then we have to go back into the troubleshooting. Anytime any of these options actually work, you definitely want to either continue into Windows or restart your computer because that may be all you have to do. In this case, it just kept doing the same thing over and over again that it was doing before with the spinning circle. So I'm going to have to go back into advanced troubleshooting and go to the next step. So we've run through all of the basic troubleshooting steps we can do in the advanced troubleshooting, including trying to uninstall updates, system restore, check disk and the command prompt and all that, and nothing seems to work. So the next step in the process is to try to reset the PC. Basically what that's gonna do is that's going to overwrite the existing corrupted windows and hopefully allow us to just get back up and running with no data loss. In this case, I was already able to get those files off the hard drive before, but if you're in a situation where you perhaps cannot do that, the Reset PC does give you the option to save your files. It's just gonna overwrite Windows, it's gonna remove any programs that did not come on the machine, but if it works, it will allow you to get back into Windows and get back up and running. Okay, so what I had to do is restart the computer multiple times until it finally brought up this automatic repair that will give me the troubleshooting options that I need in order to try to reset this computer. I wanna to go to advanced options and then troubleshoot, and then I'm gonna choose reset this PC. I'm gonna choose the option keep my files if I can because that would be preferable. Now, because this client has a Microsoft account on the machine, it's going to prompt me for a password. 
Unfortunately, this doesn't always work, but this is a good step to try before having to completely wipe and reinstall Windows. You should be able to do this without an installer disk. The installation files are stored on the local drive. So we're gonna do a local reinstall and then see what happens. If everything goes as planned, Windows should be up and running in just a couple minutes. Okay, so before you actually hit reset, if you're lucky enough to get to this point, these are some things that you absolutely need to stop and read because once you do it, as it says right here, this cannot be undone. So first of all, if you are on a laptop, you need to make sure that it is still plugged in and stays plugged in for the entire process. If you have a desktop, don't worry about it. But resetting your PC is going to change all your settings back to defaults. So if you have any special configurations, for example, if you uh, open video files in a different program that came with Windows, all of that kind of stuff is going to be set back to defaults. Now, because we chose keep our files, it is going to keep all your personal files. So basically anything that is in your documents, downloads, pictures, videos, music, none of that will be deleted. It's going to be set aside. Windows will be reinstalled and then that stuff will be put right back. So you're safe there. Now, if you haven't backed up your personal files, make sure that you choose the keep your files options. Otherwise, those will be deleted. Now, the third step here is it is going to reinstall Windows from this device. A lot of people don't know this, but your Windows installation files are saved in a specific folder on your PC. So it's just going to go into that folder just like it did when you originally installed Windows, and it's going to completely replace your existing Windows setup. Now lastly, and this is important, it's going to remove all apps and programs that did not come with this PC. So before you hit reset, it's important that you know what that last statement means. Think of it this way. If you have a program on your PC that you no longer have the installation media for and you have no way to reinstall it, or you have a program that has data inside of it, like an Avon program or an access database with client information in it, those programs will be removed. So be sure before you reset that everything you need to get back into Windows and do the things you normally do with the programs you normally use, you have that available. Once you reset, they're gone forever. So assuming that you're okay with all of these options and you understand the consequences, go ahead and hit reset. And then what's going to happen is just your corrupt Windows is going to be replaced with a good copy of Windows. So now we just sit back and wait and let Windows reinstall itself. Now, sometimes you're going to come across an issue where, like in this case, it can't do a system reset. And that's usually either because Windows is so damaged it can't be repaired or the installation files are corrupted. So the reset is going to undo the changes and basically put you right back to where you were. So unfortunately, every troubleshooting method we have tried to get this Windows back up and running did not work. We have thankfully backed up all the files. We've tested the hard drive. That's good. There's something wrong with Windows. Now, at this point, your advanced troubleshooting is not going to allow you to go any further. The reset option is the last available option you have. Thankfully, I downloaded and created a Windows installer onto a flash drive. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this inside the machine, boot to it, I'm going to wipe all the existing partitions and install Windows clean to guarantee that I'll be back up and running. If you don't have one of these already, I highly recommend you get it. I'll put the link up here for you. Okay, so I have my Windows installer plugged in and I selected F12 on the Lenovo to choose a different device to boot to. Yours may be different. Um, so you just have, if you're not sure which function key to use, just Google it. But I'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to go to my legacy USB drive, which is my Windows installer disk. It's going to boot to that flash drive and we're going to be able to reinstall Windows from there. All right, perfect. This is exactly what I wanted. I wanted to get the Windows installer window open. So I'm just going to click next and then I'm going to go ahead and choose install now. Next screen that comes up is the license agreement. I'm just going to accept that and click next. And then I'm going to choose custom install. Okay, so this part is extremely important. Before you continue, each of these partitions has data on it. If you delete one of these partitions to reinstall Windows and you do not have your data backed up, your data is gone forever. So at this point, if you don't have your data backed up, you have three options. If you don't care about your data, then you can continue and don't worry about it. If you have files on your computer that you have not backed up, you either at this point want to pull that hard drive out and maybe use an external drive like this 
to be able to copy your files off of that drive onto a working computer and then at that point you now have your data safely backed up or if you absolutely have to and you don't have the ability to get one of these or you don't want to deal with it then you can pay a professional to do this for you which is what i'm doing today for my client the general order i always follow is get the data first because that's what's most important then check the drive to see if it needs to be replaced and then try to figure out why we can't get back into windows using the troubleshooting tools that i told you about in this case i've already got everything saved so i'm just going to continue i'm going to wipe the partition i'm going to reinstall windows clean unfortunately microsoft doesn't do a very good job of letting you know which of these partitions is which so i'm going to kind of explain it a little bit before i continue i know as an example because i looked at the drive that is a 150 gigabyte hard drive now that drive is going to be split into multiple partitions system partitions things like that as you see on the screen this main drive right here is the bulk of that drive that I know based on experience that the size of the drive that's closest to the total size is your primary partition. As you can see here, it's 138 gigs and about 50 gigs free, which is personal files, programs, Windows files, all that stuff. This is the main partition that has Windows on it that isn't working. I'm going to delete that partition and then continue on. Now, these other partitions here, the reserve partitions, I usually delete these too because when you go and reinstall Windows on that main partition, it's going to then create those new reserve partitions, which could potentially be part of the problem. So I'm going to safely delete those too. And there's also some un unallocated space, which I'm not worried about. And sometimes you will also see a recovery partition. If you see that, I don't generally delete those, even if the recovery partition is not working for some reason. But later on down the road, if you can get the software for your computer to run that recovery partition, you might need that again. I just generally don't delete it, but I do delete the reserve partitions. So I'm gonna select this one right here and I'm gonna delete it. This is the main partition where all my client's data is at, but I have it backed up. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that also. Now we have the other reserve partition, but again, it's going to be recreated when Windows reinstalls. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that one also. Now, for whatever reason, I have this unallocated space here that I cannot delete. So I'm not going to worry about that right now. This is the main hard drive right here. As you can see here, it's got 139.7 gigs total and 139.7 gigs available. You can click here on new if you want to create multiple partitions. For the purposes of this video, I just want to get Windows back up and running. It's going to automatically create the partition once I hit next. So I'm going to click next. I'm going to go ahead and click OK on any pop-up messages. And now Windows is installing. So basically what we did in a nutshell is I couldn't get Windows to work any other way. I did check the drive. It's fine. So I'm not worried about replacing the drive. But whatever is in Windows or in the recovery environment that is preventing Windows from running, I just said, forget about it. And as you can see, having that Windows installer disk is super handy. I definitely recommend you make that and stick it in a drawer for times exactly like this. So we're going to go back to the installation window and see where we're at. Okay, and it looks like right now it's just getting the files ready. They're copying off that flash drive onto the hard drive, and then Windows will begin installation. So I'm going to skip this part, and we're going to come back to the final product. Okay, so the Windows installation apparently is going well. As you can see, it's starting services, and basically it's going to give me a fresh, clean Windows install. So we don't know exactly what caused the problem, but we know that at some point we just cut our losses and start over. And this is what we had to do, but it's working. Now we just got to finish setting everything up and installing drivers and copying their data back over to the computer, which takes forever, but at least now he'll have a working computer. Okay, so the Windows installation is nearly complete. This is exactly what we wanted to see with the new Windows setup. And just like that, we've got a working Windows computer again, and the machine's ready to go. So if you made it this far in the video, congratulations. As you can see, this is quite a pain in the tail, but in this particular situation where you may have a computer that just doesn't want to boot into Windows, but it's acting like it's a hard drive, it's not hard to fix if you have the right tools. And again, this Windows installer, while it's still supported by Microsoft, is absolutely gold in your pocket. I absolutely recommend that you go watch this video and create one for yourself, because if this ever happens to you, you're going to be so thankful that you had it. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you in the next one.